you go. All right. Follow that line, buddy. This is tricky. Are oh, you gonna come the other way? Oh, you don't want to go that way? You want to turn? That's cool. I don't tell robots what to do. Eventually, you're going to be telling us what to do. Can you figure this one out, though? Thank you. Thank you. Keep going. Don't get tricked. Don't get tricked. All right, this one's tricky. I did that on purpose. Nice. All right, see if you can navigate this one without destroying it this time. Do it the right way. There you go. Very good. How about this one? Last time you completely mucked it up. Two out of two. Can we take a two out of two? You did not like that edge before. Oh, you're gonna turn around on me? Oh, that's cool. Oh, you're just gonna go in loops until you find a circle? Black and white? There it is. That's better. Let's see if we can get this edge here. Nice. One more time. open source platform here using a Raspberry Pi uh, 4B and I have a top hat board I have an Intel SR305 and I also have an Intel T265 which is the tracking module and that's what I wanted to show you here I'm remoting in over the SSH into the Raspberry Pi via the uh, HoloLens 1 because uh, I can't get a HoloLens 2, it's kind of difficult. But what, you, what I wanted to show you previously, what you saw that video was the line follower um, system using these five infrared modules to follow the, the difference of white and black, those color differentials uh, around that uh, track that I created. But this is what you can use that tracking module for. So as you can kind of see, it goes in circles as, as the car would go around a certain type of track. Um, if you're using a convolutional neural net via perceptrons, um, you know, some kind of machine learning algorithm to train the system um, with a neural net to go over and over and over again with certain types of, uh, you know, tracking algorithms uh, around a predetermined track, you can use this to track the error uh, deviation. Um, you know, of the motors, of the system, of the servos, of the control system, um, all of the sensors and the feedback loops. And it's really unbelievably helpful to program autonomous machines in this manner. And again, this, this sensor is only about $200. So you can, you know, and this kit's about $100. So you've taken a, a very low price, low cost kit um, and made it sophisticated. And that's what we want to do. We want to, we want to uplift these type of systems you know, um, you know, versus some of the more unbelievably expensive uh, artificial intelligent robotic platforms out there. Uh, I hope you like this one. I'm going to keep jumping into some of the other sensors, but that's the system here. That's the little infrared sensors there and the guys in the bottom. Hope you liked it. We'll keep going. Thanks. For example, here on the motion uh, tracking model on the Intel T265, the reason this is so useful is it enhances the information uh, the robot can utilize just from one single sensor. Uh, generally, you need like a, a six or nine axis inertial measurement unit to get the yaw, pitch, and roll from the robot. But you can use this information and feed it back into the uh, the control, uh, you know, perception engine to actually 
send signals to the motor, send signals to the servo, and, and then feed it back into the sensor system. So we can go a along each one of these axes. And the T265 also provides, you know, linear velocity, uh, you know, angular momentum. Um, and, and this information is very useful as long as um, you know how to use it and where to apply it, but also the, the pose information from the robot as it's going around in, in, in circles. What you saw previously was the trajectory algorithm, so that the robot was moving in circles over and over and over again, and we can calculate that air differ differential. But this one as well is giving us precise location information on the robot and where it's looking and, and how each one of the individual axes, the X, Y, and Z, the yaw, pitch, and roll, are impacting the, the robotics platform ability to navigate its environment. Really incredible. Hope you like this one as well. Thanks. One out there on LinkedIn. I've been waiting a long time to talk about the Z2. This product is simply incredible. What I wanted to showcase first is the six axis inertial measurement unit, but they also added a barometer and a magnetometer. And these motion sensors, I believe the accelerometer and gyroscope have a data rate of around 400 hertz with a pose update of around 100 hertz. And the position sensors of the barometer and magnetometer, the data rate transfers around 25 hertz to 50 hertz with pose drifts and translations about 0.3% and rotations of 0 0.005 degrees per meter without loop correction. Um, and they also are using a six degrees of freedom uh, visual inertial stereo slam with advanced advanced sensor fusion and thermal compensation so what we can showcase here on, on the first one accelerometer is look how quick this updates look how quick the the uh, x y and z the yaw pitch and the roll of the accelerometer updating on this and this is really really fantastic you can actually record all of this and i'll put it into a file and as you're tracking and testing certain types of al algorithms and applications um, and i find this is incredibly uh, useful and again you can see that at about 400 hertz here um, streaming through this uh, vm connection over to the spatial computer the hololens one so let's go into the gyroscope again same kind of thing we're going to turn this around you'll see all that data all the metrics and again you can record that out and let's go into the orientation. Uh, that's real nice, real useful, again, for tracking algorithms, especially robotics, drones, AI autonomous vehicles, uh, et cetera, and uh, also spatial computing as well. So uh, let's go to the barometer. So this is the atmospheric pressure. Uh, again, it shouldn't be changing as I move this. It should change where you're located, where you're utilizing your robotic platform and your magnetometer. Again, it depends on what, what kind of electric fields is around, but this is going to measure those electric fields. And then your ambient temperature in Celsius, so 25 degrees to 77F, um, and some of those calculations the times 1.8 plus 32. So what I want to do next is I'm going to, I'll shut this one off, then I'm going to jump, jump into the sensor stream as they added something really unique. They call it a LIDAR view which is really useful. Let's see if I can actually launch it from here. Let's jump into the Z2 here. What you can see here is they've improved this camera so much, but they've also added this LiDAR view, which is on the right-hand side in, in the depth viewer. I have this at VGA running about 100 hertz. Upper left-hand side, you have binocular disparity side-by-side and -side depth um, underneath that with the depth shading. But th one of the things I really love about... Uh, stereo labs that they listen to the developers so you know whereas beforehand for object detection we had to write separate programs and separate applications now it's integrated into this platform so if we want to do object detection with people uh, um, you know in vehicles and, and we want to have detection outputs with bounding boxes in 2d and 3d with location speed unique ID and segmentation mass for each individual camera we can utilize that now we, we can actually integrate that right out of the box which is just incredible and they have skeletal tracking you know, just like uh, the Microsoft Azure Connect and many of the others, um, you know, out there on the market right now, this particular product by itself is one of the most exciting robotic uh, computer vision application products that I've seen in many, many years. And I highly recommend to go out and get it. And number one, think about it this way. This uh, binocular disparity stereo visual based odometry system, which is able to calculate depth up to this ultra mode, out to 40 meters, right? And we, we have a detection range in 3D at 20 meters. So it's just unbelievable. I highly recommend to everybody, if you don't have a Z2 and you're working in spatial computers, you're working in robotics and drones and autonomous vehicles to go out and get this sensor today you won't be disappointed i hope you enjoyed this i'll, I'll, I'll touch more uh, on this in the future and i'll, I'll create some more in-depth uh, videos that will really showcase the capabilities of this but i wanted you guys to see this today um, i hope you enjoyed it thank you so much for tuning in